What's the number one piece of gear that everyone's talking about at winter? Micro spikes. Micro spikes. Micro spikes. Micro spikes. My name's David. I've got extensive experience in the bush, and today we're breaking down everything micro spikes. What are they? What you need to know? Mistakes people make, and what are the best ones to buy? First off, we can see my array of micro spikes, as well as some shoes. My scale goes from least spiky to most spiky. So first off, what are micro spikes? They're essentially a pair of spikes that go onto a shoe that allows you to walk on ice and not slip. Now we're talking hiking and backpacking. You basically don't want to slip in the bush when you're going up some sort of ice slope, if you're going on a glacier, whatever it may be. You need a pair of spikes to have grip. It makes a world of difference. Ask anyone who has micro spikes who knows if you don't have your spikes on and it's a slippery ice surface, you're just sliding around and you just, you're like a baby seal and you can't, there's no control. You're just spinning around. You put on spikes, you feel like a hero. So first off, what we've got here are ice bug shoes. I just thought I'd throw this in there because it's an interesting product that I bet most people haven't seen. These have spikes built into the shoes. Now these are technically nano spikes. They're just tiny little spikes and these are a trail runner. If you haven't watched my channel, I'm big time into trail running. I don't hardly ever wear boots unless it's really cold and I need uh, like rain protection and extra warmth or if it's a lot of rock and scree. Otherwise I always wear trail runners. These are running shoes with spikes in them. These are more of a situation where if you have a lot of ice on a trail you're doing, maybe you'd want to wear these then. These are also Gore-Tex. These are designed to be worn in the winter. So it's kind of a, you'd really have to know exactly what the conditions are. We've got the next one here. There's also a nano spike. I don't recommend these, don't buy these. If you're gonna have a nano spike and you really want something better off with the ice bug, although these are not cheap shoes. These are nano spikes. They have just four little spikes on them. Once again, there's no reason to buy these. You might as well just get one of the ones over here, but I just thought I'd show the full array because sometimes I'm on a group hike or I go hiking with friends and they'll bring a friend along and they show up with something like this. Yeah, yeah, I brought my micro spikes. Uh-uh, <laughs> you can't come hiking with, with one, a pair of these. Uh, often it's a safety thing. People will be slipping and sliding around. We're going up surface where you're expecting to be able to walk right up, no problem. And someone's wearing something like this, it becomes really sketchy and dangerous. For that reason, don't buy these. Next one is the same. This one's got a little cleat. You can see here it has nine little spikes. They're not that sharp. I can push on my fingers and it doesn't hurt. And then the back here is just this metal coiled uh, wire. So these ones, they, they would go on like this on the front there. And then this just stretches and you have to just pull really hard. And so that's how that's going on. These little metal coils, they don't offer a lot of grip. They're kind of worthless. Even for walking around town, just going to the grocery store in the winter, these are not a good option either. I, these are pretty much useless. Just stay away from these. The next one, so my buddy lent me these. These are hilarious and I thought I'd include them because I'd never seen a pair like this before. You can see these are micro spikes. Uh, they go this way. This is the heel and this is the toe box up here. So they go like this and that stretches down now what's funny about these is they have these like they're sharp there's like these sharp metal pieces that all rotate you can see that but the problem with this too is they only grip on this hoop so if you're stepping on ice that's uneven and this whole section is in some sort of uneven part of the ice this is not going to grip <laughs> this is kind of a novelty thing i thought i'd show you because it's really cool but i would stay away from these two because they really don't offer that much so now we're getting to the actual micro spikes that people would buy and use. So what's interesting is my buddy also shared these ones with me. Interesting because you look at these two, they look the same, but they're not. And that's the main thing we're going to talk about here today. So these ones come from wish.com and these ones are mine that are like four or five years old that I got from Amazon. These things are absolute tanks. These things are, yeah, these are the cheap knockoffs. It's funny because all these come from a couple of factories in China and even now those factories have figured out that oh if we produce better products then we can actually get more sales so now you have knockoffs of the knockoffs <laughs> they look almost the same but they're not so the first thing to note my micro spikes here they have double chain links these ones do not these are all single chain links why you'd want double is because often if one of these breaks you can just use pliers and just squish it back on there and you're good to go. You'd much rather have a double chain link. These are also developed with 201 stainless steel, which is a type of stainless steel that was developed as a more price friendly alternative to nickel as the prices of nickel have gone up. And what's interesting about that is these are strong, they're effective, they're really good. The only thing to note about 201 stainless steel is it's susceptible to corrosion from salt water. So there's not a lot of places in the world you have to worry about that. I actually live in one of those. I've got the ocean just five minutes down the road from my house. 
but we also have snowy mountains here. Uh, so as long as you're not taking wet gear from the water, maybe you're someone who does scuba diving in the winter and you don't, don't throw that on your micro spikes or if you have kayak gear or whatever it is. Aside from that, keep, keep the salt water away from these and this material, there's no problems with it at all. The other thing to note too is this brand is called Uni Gear. There's a whole bunch of these on Amazon and some of them will have the double links, some of them don't. You'll notice the double links all, are all the main connections to the main uh, parts of the micro spike. All the secondary ones use a single link. I've had so many friends have problems with either a link breaking because they have the cheap ones or their micro spike falls off and they end up with only one by the time they get back to the car. And that's because these have a bit of a design flaw. These can get pulled off and I've had so many friends lose their micro spikes because something like a branch or just even walk in the snow, it hit, you know, hits the side of some ice or something and just pops it off and they don't notice for a while and then their micro spike's gone. And often if it falls down into some ice or some snow, like you'll never find it. So that's why I just recommend these. I'll link up these in the description down below. You want ones that have this strap. The strap is so simple, but basically it just goes over the front of your shoe like that. It goes underneath this other piece of rubber. You pull it down and you crank it back on itself. So now it doesn't matter if this gets popped off the front or the back, it's at least attached to your shoe so you won't be losing your micro spike. <laughs> I've got friends who've lost multiple of like the same foot micro spikes. So they end up having two or three left foot and they're missing right foots because of this. These are shaped for the different foot. There will be other brands. They might be a dollar or two less. They don't come with a strap. Don't even bother because you'll end up losing a micro spike and then you got to buy a whole new pair again. I'd say just stick with this brand. I've been using this, this literally this exact pair for I think five years now. I don't have a single broken link on them. So I'm super happy with these. They're really cheap too. If we look at the wish.com ones, you'll see they're actually a little bit smaller and they don't have that strap and also they use a different steel which you can tell is already rusting and it, um, see this link here is already kind of broken. Just get yourself the higher price knockoff one and uh, be done with it. There's some brands out there, I think one's like Catula. They sell them in the like Mountain Equipment Co-op MEC up here in Canada which is the same as kind of like REI in the States. They're kind of more the name brand but really they all come from the same factory, the good ones. Like this, this uni gear will be the exact same Catula one just with this branding on it. So don't think that if you buy them one that's twice as much that you're getting a better thing, you're not. To put these on, all we're gonna do is put it on the front like this. It's really hard to do without <laughs> having your body weight on it, but you, you put it on the front and then you grab the back here. There's this rubber handle and I'll just put my hand in there like this and you just stretch it out like that. With your body weight standing on it, it's a lot easier. So the first thing to know is when you put them on, you might wanna just quickly you know, lift up your heel and check and make sure that the links, everything is laying flat. Sometimes these links get a little bit bent and then the spikes themselves cannot be laying flat. They can be like arced up like that. So now let's just take a look at this. This is a crap on. This is not a micro spike. I just thought I'd throw it in there. You can see the spike size on this. They're quite small. The spikes are significantly bigger. If you're wondering what these are for, you're basically these are mountaineering crampons. You're using this if you're not necessarily just needing to walk on ice, but climbing ice. You've got teeth in the front to kick your boot into the ice and actually walk up the ice and have this dig in, you know, a good inch or so. So this is when you're getting to objectives that are much more serious and you really need to be kicking in and a lot more stable. Micro spikes are more for if you're hiking, backpacking, not so much climbing and mountaineering. A couple of mistakes people make with micro spikes, often the time to use them is not the very first time it snows of that season because micro spikes are only effective on ice. They're not effective on snow. Often it will snow and you say you get like an inch or two of snow, then everyone pulls out their micro spikes and starts wearing them. But really you don't need that until the snow melts, it turns to ice, there's an ice layer and then maybe if it snows a, a centimeter or an inch or something on top of that, then there's something for this to, to grab onto. If there's no ice underneath, they won't do anything. You're just wearing, you know, spikes in, in a situation you don't need them. So something to think about. Also, if you have too much snow, if you have like two or three inches of snow and it's a nice coating over everything, your micro spikes will get filled with snow. It depends on the, the consistency of the snow. If it's really sticky snow, it will pack in the micro spikes and you'll have zero traction. It'll feel like you're not wearing them. This happened to me uh, up on Mount Anderson. You know, I was with a buddy there and like 
he had crampons, I had micro spikes and I was sliding. I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> I was sliding around like a baby seal. Like I could not go in. I had to slide down on my butt because I literally had no traction. So it's something to think about if there's a lot of extra snow. It's hard to know when you're doing this stuff. Sometimes for that reason, I bring crampons as well as micro spikes. It starts getting heavy, but it just is what it is. It depends if it's a, a dangerous mountain or not. If it's not, you can just bring these and usually you're good to go. Just think about that ice layer. Once you get past more than a few inches, you're getting into feet, multiple feet, then you're gonna need snowshoes. I just did a video on why I hate MSR snowshoes. If you wanna check out that video there, if you wanna check out these, I'll leave a link in the description down below. I'll see you in the next one.